Uh, and welcome every one of you to this continuous series that we've been featuring on this YouTube. We've been looking at what we would consider the very foundations of why the Messiah has not come. And the requirements, as indicated through Scripture, our Scripture, our Hebrew Scripture, that in fact the Messiah has not yet come because he has not fil fulfilled what is required of him to fulfill. In addition, we see that even the messianic error has not, in effect, become effectuated. It has not taken place. It has not flowered. It has not become a reality. And we're going to look at some passages that strengthen this position. And although we do want that the Messiah come, we do want the messianic error because it will be an error of ultimate bliss in, in the sense that we will be able to live in peace one with another. Not as we have it today, where we have warring factions of different religions going after each other's throats, killing them, beheading them, in particular the what is called the the religion of peace, which is nothing but war, murder, and savages that they themselves should be brought to an end in the same manner or worse than they per perpetrate on their victims. Now, I want to take a look at this passage because it's very important that we understand that there are verses in the passage of the scripture that tells us that the, that the redemption of God's chosen will be forever. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17, we read, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. Is Israel currently redeemed, saved from its oppressors? No. Ezekiel 37:26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. In other words, God with the children of Israel, God's presence in such a way that it will be very clear to the world that God is with Ben Israel. Ezekiel 43, verse 7. The place of my throne, where I will dwell, in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Again, you'll notice that it says, in the midst of the children of Israel. In other words, when the children of Israel, the presence of God rests in such a way that all the world will realize and recognize that God is with the children of Israel. Joel chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwells in Zion. For those of you who are anti-Zionist, it's very clear where God dwells, his habitation, his presence, his eye, his heart is in Zion. Micah 4, seven. the Lord shall reign over them in the Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Now there's also a passage in, our, in, our, in the Jewish scripture that tells us how God's Spirit, the presence of God, will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel. Isaiah 44, verse 3, And I will pour out my Spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offsprings. Children upon children, all the descendants of Israel. Ezekiel 39, verse 29, we read, Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my Spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord God. In other words, God's no longer going to hide his face. He's going to come out and defend Israel from all of its enemies. Yes, even the enemies that have become new enemies. Joel chapter 2, verse 27 through 28. And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 15 through 17 we read. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee, and thou shalt not see any evil any more. Uh, see evil any more. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty; he will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. Zechariah chapter two, verse ten through eleven, we read: Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, says the Lord, and many nations shall re shall join the Lord in that day, and, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in their midst. And we continue reading. 
passages throughout passages of our scripture of things that has not yet taken place or fulfilled to the ultimate to the last detail Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 26 through 28 we read and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore and my tabernacle shall also shall be with them and the heathens shall know that I am the Lord I am the Lord do sanctify Israel when the sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore in other words the nations of the world will recognize that God is with Israel when God sanctifies the nation of Israel and will dwell in the midst of the nation of Israel the Gentiles will recognize oh God is with the Jews Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 through 5 for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a sacrifice and without an image and without a ephod and without a teraphim afterwards shall the children of Israel return we see that happening today there is no sacrifice there is no temple there is no image there is no ephod where divine guidance would guide the people of Israel but what we do see is a return of all the children of Israel slowly from the most deepest parts of the world Amos chapter 9 verse 11 that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old in other words return of the monarchy Israel cannot function as is functioning today in the messianic context Zechariah chapter 1 verse 16 we read therefore thus says the Lord I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy my house shall be built in it in other words the basis of the rebuilding of the temple is not based upon the legalism and the strife but rather because of God's kindness God's charity God's blessings God's mercies chesed Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 we read behold the man whose name is the branch the semach he shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of the Lord now uh, interesting interesting enough Jesus never built a temple neither did Menachem Mendel Schneerson build the temple he may have built uh, Chabad he may have strengthened 770 but my friends don't be mistaken 770 is not the Beit HaMikdash Beit HaMikdash is supposed to be built in Jerusalem Verses tells us that through repentance we express sorrow for the wrong do doings and return to God for forgiveness of our sins and gives us redemption. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 we read, verse 9 through 10, For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, if thou hast hearkened to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, and if thou turn to the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, with all of thy soul. Isaiah chapter, chapter 55 verse 7 says, let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will ab abundantly, let me repeat that, abundantly pardon. So this notion that only through the blood of Jesus, only through a person that we can get saved, is a complete error in biblical proportions. It is only through God and directly to God when we ask God for forgiveness does he bring us back and he pardons us of all of our iniquities of all of our sins this is the God of Israel Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12 and Jeremiah 36 verse 3 return thou backsliding Israel says the Lord for I am mercy I am merciful thus says the Lord I will not keep anger forever that they may return every man from his evil way and I will and I may forgive their iniquity and their sin Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 and 19 I have no pleasure in the death of a wicked but that the wicked shall turn from his ways and live but if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right he shall live thereby for the just shall live by his faith if you are doing the wrong things and you turn around and change your life and you ask God for forgiveness God is a faithful God to forgive you to pardon you to turn your life around and make anew your whole entire life it is God it is not a human being that died for you 
It is God. It is not a human being that bled. It is God who says, I forgive you. If you come to me and return with all of your heart, God, my friend, is faithful. He's full of mercy. He is waiting his children to come back. Only that they recognize that they have done wrong and confess to him your sins, not to a human being behind a closet or behind a little door, to him and to him alone. And what does it say in Ezekiel? God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, rather that the wicked will return from away from his evil ways, that he should live. Hosea chapter 14, verse 1, verse 2 and verse 4. O Israel, return unto the Lord God, for thou hast first fallen by thine iniquities. Take with you words, notice this, take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity, receive us graciously. This is what God desires that we say to him. Listen to this very carefully. It's not saying to believe in Jesus, to ask him for forgiveness. It doesn't say that. It says very clearly, take away all of our iniquity, and receive us graciously. And it says continually, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Freely, God will love you. Grace will abound. God's kindness and good eye will shine upon you. For mine anger is turned away from him. Now, let's conclude with some of the very important expectations on the later expectations of what's happening here. We presented passages that tells us that before Judgment Day, Elijah the prophet will appear to call people to repent, so that they are more worthy, that they are worthy and righteous people before God. In other words, pre-preparation before the revelation of God in a very public and worldwide global way. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 through 6, we read, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Now, we read also things, really strange things happening during this period of time. Things that we have not even seen yet. What does it say in chapter 11 of Isaiah? Verse 15, The Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian, of the Egyptian sea and shall smite it in seven streams, and make the men go over dry sh land. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12, we read, And by the river upon the bank thereof shall grow all trees of, for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. Joel chapter 3, verse 18, we read, And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hill shall flow with milk, and a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, we read, And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west, and thou shalt be a great valley. And the half of the mount shall move towards the north, and the half of it towards the south. Has this happened yet? No, my friends. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 8, we read, and it shall be in that day that the living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Notice it doesn't say it shall go out from 770. Notice it doesn't say it's going to come out from uh, Jesus' throne or from Jesus. It says out of Jerusalem. Half of them towards the former seas and the other half towards the hinder sea. Now we also have a very clear understanding of the judgment that is coming, the day of the Lord which is to come. It is a terrible day, awesome. It is to cause shaking in the hearts of men and women and children. It will be terrible on that day when God will destroy sinners and save righteous. And the new heavens and the earth will be created where Israel will be with the Lord. Israel's portion is not with the evil or the nations of the world. Israel's portion is with the God, the God of of all the world. In Joel chapter 2 verse 1 we read in, chapter, in verse 10 and 32 Blow ye the trumpet of shofar in Zion and, the and sound an alarm in my holy mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. 
For the day of the Lord cometh, the earth shall quake before them, the heaven shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining, and it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I want you to notice this. Whoever. This, this includes both Jews and Gentiles. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, and it doesn't say here Jesus. This is referring to the holy name of God shall be delivered for in the Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be delivered and the Lord sh has said in the remnant whom the Lord shall call Joel chapter 3 verse 14 through 16 for the Lord for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision the Lord sh also shall roar out of Zion the roaring voice of God out of Zion shall scream out and he shall destroy the sinners thereof there uh, there out of it for behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor shall it come into the mind. For as the new heavens and the earth will I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, your, so that your seed and your name remains. Now, this is not talking about the destruction of earthly constellations or solar constellations or celestial bodies. This is we're talking about a renewal of the whole entire way we see and experience things. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 1 through 3. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. That we see signs of this organizing under the administration that we currently have in White House. How he's orchestrating so that all the nations of the world, both the Muslim world as well as the non-Muslim world, will begin to go against Israel, against Jerusalem. Imagine, never before in the life of America have we ever seen a president who had been so against Israel, so against the Jews, who has gone to so far out as to create peace with the very enemies who wishes to annihilate the Jews and create a plan to do so. My friends, we're seeing a lot of this this part starting to take place. And the city shall be taken, the houses rifled, uh, and women ravished, and half of the city shall go into this captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Notice, I want you to notice this. God is going to wait until he picks up the fight with the Jewish people and they harm them. At the point where they harm them, then you will see the hand of God smite all of the enemies. And all of those nations that come against Israel will be forced to have to come every year to Israel in the Feast of Tabernacle. There are verses that tells us about the war against Israel by Gog and Magog, when God will intervene to save Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 18 through 23, and it shall come to pass at that same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, and says the Lord of God, that my fury shall come upon up in my face, and surely that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and I will call for a sword against him throughout my mountains. Against who? Against Gog and all of his hordes of armies. My friends, and this Americans who are wa watching this video, we as a country have our faith either with Israel or against Israel. And if our nations decide to go against Israel, Listen to what God says to these nations. I will call for a sword against him throughout my mountains. You come to the Holy Land and you declare war against Israel and you try to undermine the Jewish people and you harm them. I'm serving notice to you. God himself will cut you down with his sword. Woe to those who go against the Jewish people. Thus it says, And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Remember what 
God did to the Egyptians? Remember the plague that started ravaging the country of Egypt as a result of how they treated the Jews? Just look in America. Look at all the disasters that has taken place solely because our president has turned his back against Israel and are, is planning and scheming to do even further damage to the Jewish people for he does not respect the Jewish people. He does not respect nor love the God of Israel but his God is a God that we know not. His God is a God of Ishmael and though you may say it's the same God the way of directing himself towards that one God is a complete different direction one which was not taught by Isaac and by Jacob and by the children of Israel and I will give unto Gog a place for their graves in Israel and it shall be to them a renown the day that I am glorified, shall be glorified, says the Lord. Gog and the nations of the world who decide to come against Israel. There is a special place for you. A special burial place that is dedicated for the nations of the world who will come against Israel. It will be a burial place. This verse tells us also about the messianic expectations that occurs in the last days. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 30 we read, Even in the latter days, if, you, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, God always gives a chance. Just because prophecy takes fulfillment, it doesn't mean that God doesn't extend his hand of mercy towards you. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations that flow unto it. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 8 we read After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years thou shalt come into the land. Who is he speaking to? To Gog. Who is he calling to repent and change? Gog. Daniel chapter 2 verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that revealeth the secrets and makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days so even those secret things which belongs to God God reveals these things and make it known to the king to his anointed to his leaders Hosea chapter 3 verse 5 after the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days there's a couple of things we need to take a look at the children of Israel will return that's happening seek the Lord their God that's happening and David their king that's not happening here we specifically are looking at a king whose heart is for God a leader who has a connection with God and wants that leader to be the one guiding the nation of Israel and shall fear the Lord Yedat Shemaim that has some some temerity of the presence of God of God himself and his goodness in the latter days now we've seen it in this video in these series of videos a lot of passages of the expectations the messianic expectations which are clearly has not been fulfilled and therefore, with complete certainty, affirmation, I can say that Judaism knows that the Messiah has not yet come. Now, this begs the question, if this is the case, that none of these prophecies has been fulfilled, how can you or anyone say, oh, well, Jesus or the Lubavitcher Rebbe ha is the Messiah when he hasn't fulfilled deadly squat? with all due respect, with all due love you may have for Jesus or you may have for the Lubavitcher Rebbe or all the could have been, should have been, and would have been of our history. And unfortunately I've had to take this type of twist to cover all of the failed potential messiahs of our history. Till this day the messiah has not come. Wake up and smell the coffee. In those days the Messiah is to preside over the land which 
has the messianic expectations happening or fulfilled. We have material pro uh, prosperity expectations. The promised land, the fruitfulness, the happiness, the well-being, the safety and no fear, peace, animal harmless, enemies destroyed. In other words, no more existence of ISIS or any of those who oppose the children of Israel. They will be at peace with the children of Israel. The enemies destroyed, enemies wealth and service. In addition, we have a spiritual expectation. We know that Israel's Redeemer is not a human being. Israel's Redeemer is not a man with the holes in his hand. Israel's Redeemer is not a man with a black hat and a black coat that died and they made him into something that he is not. We know Israel's Redeemer is the Lord God of Israel. His chosen people will be made great and Israel will be free. Idol worship will end. A new heart will be perfect, will perfect the human righteousness and in the Jews and in the rest of the world as well. The Torah will be everlasting observed. Israel's righteous conduct will be the spiritual light to the nations. Judaism will be, let me say this again, Judaism, not Christianity, not Islam, Judaism will be the one world religion God will be exalted, glorified, sanctified by his chosen people. The redemption will be forever, not a part-time thing. God's spirit will be in the midst of Israel. And the temple will be permanently and perfectly built in the appropriate location. Repentance is the only means of returning to God for his forgiveness, not placing your faith in a human being that could not and will not and shall not and has not forgiven you of any sins. Finally, we are to have Elijah the prophet and some strange miraculous happening take place. The day of judgment, the war of Gog and Magog and the designations of the quote unquote later days. Now bring this back and ask yourself, what in any of these three past videos that we've looked at, did Jesus fulfill any of these prophecies? He didn't rebuild the temple, even though he says, destroy this temple in three days I will build it. He didn't do it. Neither did the Baba Rebbe. There are some very clear things must take place during his lifetime. And up to this point, None of the could have been, should have been, and would have been have done anything but not met these requirements. And thus, with a very broken heart, weighed heart, you have to be realistic. Messiah has not come. It is the desire, the heartbeat, and the endeavor of every single Jew to want the Messiah to come. But let's not be confused or deceived by would have been, should have been, and could have been. Enough of the pseudo faith in false or unfulfilled messiahs. Let's really ask God. Enough, God. Die. Die. Send us the Messiah already. Come. Make yourself revealed and known. Dwell. Dwell among the children of Israel in such a way that the nations will once again fear you and understand that you are with us, the children of Israel. Review these videos. Share them. Don't keep it to yourself. Let other people understand. Messiah has not come. It's not Jesus. And to my dear friend, Dr. Michael Brown, I'm sorry to say this, but if God were to ask you, why did you believe in the decoys that I sent you? Why did you allow yourself to be deceived when I'm the one that saved you? It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't his blood. It wasn't his sacrifice for you. You have replaced me, Michael. You have replaced me for a man. And I said to you, Michael, I am not a man that I should lie, nor a son of man that I should repent. Michael, 
come back home. Let go of the decoy that is Jesus. It makes you feel good. It makes a lot of money for you. <laughs> but, Michael, the reality is, he's not the one. And when you have to give an answer to God, I would hope and pray it's not going to be the same one you gave on the radio show. Because that answer, my dear friend, was very pathetic. Putting God into doubt when the one that should be put into doubt is you. And to all the Michael, all the Michael Browns out there, who thumps into the belief as a Jew for Jesus, I challenge you. I challenge you. Ask God. And for certain, He was going to show you, because it's very clear. One thing we know for sure. Does death, sickness, illness still take effect? Do people's hearts still desire to do evil and wickedness? As long as those dimensions are still active and in power, it's an indication redemption has not made its way. It has not effectuated into the life of our normal society, which is really still under the same situation during the time of Jesus. My friend, nothing has changed. Only what we wish would happen and who we wish to be the Messiah. That has changed. And that's really more polemic and politics than anything else. I wish you and yours that Hashem would allow your mind to open, that the Eternal One would bless you with the ability to understand that God is the one who will establish all things. And when He does it, He does it perfectly right. Shalom Bracha. This is Moshe Terrell.